Okay. Uh, so for part D, I see that I have the same index on both of these terms. So I can condense them using product property. Doing that, I now have x to the seventh times x squared. And using my properties of exponents, I can add the seven and the two together to get x to the ninth. So just imagine for a moment what we have. If I have x to the ninth, that means I have nine x's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them. And if I want to rewrite them as perfect cubes, I need to make groups of three. So there's one, two, three, and there's none left over. So I can rewrite the x to the ninth power as the cube root of x cubed, because I have one set there, times x cubed, because I have one set there, times x cubed, because I have one set there. Which means I can pull out three x's, which is x times x times x, or that gives me x cubed as my final answer. Part E has a square root. I know that because it doesn't specify the index, but just understand whenever I have a square root, the index is technically 2. And I want to rewrite these as perfect squares which we are pretty comfortable with, I should hope. So 100 is a perfect square of 10, and I have five x's. If you need to, write it out. One, two, three, four, five. Because I have a square root, I need to make sets of two. So one, two, and I have an x left over. That means I can rewrite it as x squared times x squared times x. I can only pull out the perfect squares, but whatever isn't a perfect square needs to stay behind in the square root. So I can pull out a 10 times an x times an x, but the x to the first power is going to have to stay in the square root, meaning my final answer is 10x squared root x. Part f. I have a quotient. So I need to break apart the quotient using the quotient property and then see if I can rewrite them as perfect cubes. In the numerator, I have the cube root of x. Well, x to the first power, I only have one x. And I can't make any sets of three from that. So that's as simplified as it can get. The denominator, I have 12 y's. Again, if it helps, write out what you have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Because it's a cube root, I need to make sets of 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's no left over. Now you could write, hopefully you're getting it by now, but you could write y cubed times y cubed times y cubed times y cubed, and then you could pull out those y's, but I'm hoping you're starting to see that because I have four sets of y cubes, I'm going to end up with y cubed in my denominator. But I'll go ahead and I'll write all of the work just in case I'm losing anyone here. So if I rewrite this, it's the cube root of y cubed times y cubed times y cubed times y cubed. I was able to pull out four y's. So that gave me y times y times y times y, which is why I was saying that's just y to the fourth power. Now you're not allowed to have a radical in the denominator, and I don't here, just the numerator. So that's okay. I already have... Uh, variable raised to a power in the denominator. This is fine. Let's take a look at num part G. For part G, once again, it's a cube root, so let's rewrite it as perfect cubes. We do have the perfect cubes written on the front page, and I want you to notice 216 is the perfect cube of 6. So I can rewrite 216 as 6 cubed. 
x to the seventh power, I have seven x's. So if I want to make sets of three, I have one set here and one set here and one left over. So I can rewrite it as x cubed times x cubed times x to the first power. If you want to check, just add the exponents. 3 plus 3 plus 1 is 7. I have y to the ninth. So if I have 9 y's and I want sets of 3, here's 1, 2, 3 sets of 3. So y cubed, y cubed, y cubed. z to the 14th power. I don't have enough hands, or excuse me, I don't have enough fingers to do that. So I'm just going to if I wanted to, I could do what I did on the other ones and write out 14 z's, or I have z cubed, so that's 3, z cubed, 6, z cubed, 9, z cubed, 12. I can't do another one because then that'd be 15, but if I do a z squared, 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 2 does give me 14. Now I can pull out the perfect cubes, so a 6, 2 x's, 3 y's, and 4 z's. So I said a 6. If I pull out 2 x's, that's x times x, or x squared. 3 y's is y times y times y, or y cubed. 4 z's is z to the 4th power. Whatever we did not pull out, we need to rewrite underneath the cube root. So I did not pull out an x to the first power. I did not pull out a z squared. Hopefully we're starting to pick up on it by now. Let's do another one just in case. For h, we have the fourth root of 162 over the fourth root of 2. Quotient property says if they're broken apart, we could put it back together, so I am going to try that, and I'm going to show you why. Because I noticed something when I looked at this problem. 162 divided by 2 is the fourth root of 81. Just because I'm more used to working with stuff like this, I recognize that the fourth root of 81 is 3. Because 3 to the fourth power is 81. So I'm done already. I just wanted to give you a problem where we did a quotient property in the other direction. That's all. All right, I. Once again, we have the square root. This is what we should be comfortable with. So 50, no, that is not a perfect square. But I do know that 50 has factors of 25 and 2. And 25 is a perfect square of 5. So I'm going to rewrite it as the square root of 25 times 2. And then x cubed, I'm going to rewrite that so I have perfect squares. I have three x's, and I want to make sets of 2. So I can make one set of 2, and I have one left over. So x squared, x. All right. Let's pull out the perfect squares. So 25 is the perfect square of 5, and I can pull out one of my x's. Underneath the square root, I need to write what remains. So that's 2x. And that'd be your final answer. Okay, for j, I'm going to go ahead and break it apart using quotient property. And I'm going to clean up the numerator. I have 12 x's. I want to make sets of 4 because it's a fourth root. So x to the fourth, x to the fourth. So that gives me 8. x to the fourth, that's 12 because 4 plus 4 plus 4 gives me 12. So that's nice. I don't have anything left over. y to the fourth, oh, well, that's already a perfect fourth power, so that's good. And then I do have that fourth root of 3. The only factors of 3 are 1 and 3, and that's not a perfect fourth other than 1. So that's just going to have to stay there. And I can pull out in the numerator 3x's, making it x cubed, and 1y. I don't have to rewrite a fourth root in the numerator because there's nothing left. I pulled everything out. But in the denominator, 
I do have that fourth root of three. Now I do need to rationalize this and remember it is going to be the fourth root still, but I'm going to have to get a three to the fourth power in the denominator. So I already have three to the first power, meaning I need to multiply by three cubed. Because one plus three would give me that four. So that means I have x cubed y, the fourth root of three cubed is 27. So I'm just going to put a 27 there. All over the fourth root of, eventually you don't have to write the step, I'm just doing it. The fourth root of product property, I condense these. One plus three gave me four. See how the power cancels out with the index. So here's my final answer. Make sure you don't try to divide the 27 by the three because this is underneath a root and this is a whole number. Th these are not like terms. You can't simplify that at all. Okay, last question. We have the fourth root and cube root, but these are different indexes, which means I cannot use product property. I cannot condense them. So instead, I'm just going to have to simplify them as is. The fourth root of x to the eighth power. So I'm going to have to rewrite my eighth power as perfect fourths. Well, I have eight x's. I can make two sets of four. And I have nothing left over. So it's x to the fourth, x to the fourth. Oops, this isn't a quotient. And I'm multiplying that by the cube root of x to the fourth. So now I want to rewrite them as perfect cubes. Well, I have four x's. I can make one set of three, but I am going to have one left over. So over here, I had the fourth root and two fours that I could pull out. So this becomes x squared. I'm multiplying that by, I have the cube root and I could pull out one x, but I had to leave the x to the first power right here in the cube root because I couldn't pull that out. It stays behind. Just one more step. I could condense x squared times x to the first power because that's my property of exponents. So it's x cubed times the cube root of x. That's my final answer. It's just going to take some practice. So I want you to go ahead and try the homework for this assignment and I'll post the key after the due date. Just let me know what questions you have. Really take your time and we're going to have another task on this section for more practice.